Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be making the perfect developer portfolio website. If you have a personal portfolio or website and you haven't looked at it in months, you don't know what to do with it, and you're still trying to get jobs, this video is specifically made for you. Over the past couple of months, I've been working on reviewing and updating and helping junior developers, and in that time, I've reviewed over 100 individual portfolio websites. I've learned that there are some things that are non-negotiable that you have to do right in order to have a solid portfolio website. I've also learned that it's not all that difficult and it's something you can set up simply and easily and not have to worry about maintaining over time. So let's jump right into it with the four things that you absolutely need to nail on your portfolio website to make it the perfect portfolio for you to get a job. First, let's talk about overall design. Now this is an element that is the first thing that an HR manager or anyone is gonna see when they see your portfolio. And the idea here is to find something that can impress but not overwhelm the person that's reviewing your site. The best way that I've seen people do this is with solid color or gradient backgrounds and nothing too complicated or too intense. Photo backgrounds don't usually work very well because they distract from the overall goal of the page. Similarly, overly using animations or too much, unless you're a 3D animator, can usually be distracting to the user. So I would definitely recommend simple colors, simple gradients, and something that you can continue to use throughout the rest of the page to keep it cohesive, but also incredibly simple. Here's some examples of things that I think go well. When you have a simple, quick tagline, whether that's your desired role or your name, it's an easy way to show, this is who I am, this is what I do, and let's jump into it versus other examples where there are too many headings, too much text, and overall a disjointed feel sometimes can be distracting and oftentimes makes it look like the page itself is just not as well polished. Which is super interesting and a key point and a pro tip that I would give is that it's not necessarily the content or the amount of content that makes your portfolio even better, it's really the quality of that content and paring it down, simplifying is usually a great step to making your portfolio even better. So the first thing a lot of people do, and the first thing that I see a lot on these portfolio websites is an about me section. So this section should be somewhere where you can just explain who you are, what role you're trying to achieve, and how you do that. I did a video a couple of weeks back on LinkedIn, and I talked about how to improve your about me section there. I think a lot of the same principles apply. So start this with what you want to accomplish, who you are, and put a little bit of background about yourself, but leave that at the end. Make sure the first thing that people read is what you're looking for, what experience you do have, and then what you want to accomplish in your career, what things you want to work on, what jobs you're working toward, and things that you want to accomplish. I think that's a great way to show an HR hiring manager, someone that's looking to potentially bring you on for an interview, what you're trying to accomplish. And if that really resonates with that HR manager, that's a great way to get in for that interview. You really want something that's gonna resonate with them and really attaches itself to the job descriptions that you're specifically applying for. If you're a React developer, make sure to mention React. Don't just mention grandiose or general things like, I wanna change the world with technology. I do see that a lot and it's, it's irrelevant and it's unnecessary. It's not realistic and it doesn't really help you get a job. All of us are passionate about technology. We're really all trying to do the same thing here, but when you're trying to get a job, you wanna be specific and you wanna be relevant, you wanna be actionable. If you wanna build fast and reliable websites with React, or if you wanna build web apps or mobile apps with React Native, whatever you really wanna do, that's the place where you wanna put it. You don't wanna be grandiose or excessive. You really wanna be simple, you really wanna be specific, and you need to be able to back something like that up in an interview. So if you're a senior developer, this is also an excellent place where you can add your experience, companies you've worked for, people you've contracted for, just kind of mentioning those names or those companies you've worked with, that's a great place to put it. Uh, if you don't have an experience section, I don't think they're necessary, so the about section is a great place to throw maybe a few logos of companies you've worked for in the past and what roles you did there. If you're a junior developer going for your first role, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, the third piece of your website, which I think is the most important, is your project section, where you can really showcase the things that you've done and the skills that you have. So a common mistake that I see over and over again is junior developers that put every single project they've ever done with friends in their coding bootcamp, homework assignments, everything, they throw it all onto their website. Dozens of projects, even hundreds of projects that people have put onto their websites, and that is way, way too much. I think GitHub is a great place to host all of your repositories and you wanna have hundreds of different project repositories on there, go for it. But on your portfolio website, only the ones that you really are proud of, the ones that you would want to talk about in an interview, should be the ones that you put on your website. Really, this should be three to five of the main ones that you think you did your best work on, ideally ones that you contributed most, if not all, of the code to, so that you can really talk to those specifics when you're asked about them. An important thing to remember about that is a hiring manager is not going to be spending very much time on your website or on your projects. If they do click into one, you wanna make sure that the one that they're clicking into is one that you're really proud of, you spent a lot of time on. 
Heaven forbid if you go in and they see uh, an old wet homework assignment from your boot camp and that's the only one that they click on and they're like, well, you know, this guy's pretty basic, pretty junior. Instead of seeing the project you may have spent months on, if they just click on the wrong one, that's really unfortunate. So you wanna make sure to stack the deck in your favor and only put the projects that you would want them to click on, you would want them to review and see what you've done. Also, this is a great place to put your skills. A lot of people will put logos or words or anything, just keyword density to put all their skills on their portfolio website. I personally like the logo approach. Usually logo matched with word is great because if the hiring manager doesn't have tech experience, they may not know what the logos mean. So explaining those is very helpful. With the skills section, this is something that I've talked about over and over again, and I mentioned it when I reviewed multiple dozen portfolio websites in another video that you can check out. But oftentimes people put way too many skills into this section. They'll put 15, 20, 25 different skills, frameworks, and languages into their skills section. That is excessive and it's unnecessary. A lot of times when I see dozens of different skills on the page, that means to me that they're not necessarily experts at any of these. These are just everything that they've seen in their experience. That's not super helpful. I have seen people divide this successfully where they put these are the things that I'm specialized in. These are other things that I have exposure to. Maybe that is helpful, especially in maybe a startup environment where there's a lot more variety of skills that are necessary for any junior developer or even senior developer. But for the most part, make sure that this is something that you're especially skilled at. You're really only highlighting the major things that you want to specialize in and that way you can really narrow in on the roles that you're looking for. Okay, the fourth thing is a contact section. So there are multiple different camps on this and it really depends on what you're looking for. So we're gonna start with, if you're a junior or a senior developer and you're looking to get a job, having a contact form on your website is unnecessary. All you need to have is maybe your email address, maybe a Twitter or Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever you wanna put on there that they can contact you at social media, things like that where they can send you a DM, that's useful. Having a contact form is unnecessary and it's just additional maintenance on your website that you really don't need. Okay, we're gonna jump into a bonus fifth section and that is attachments. If you have attachments or you want people to download your resume or big case studies you want people to read through, adding these is super helpful. I would either add them as a section down at the bottom with icons or some people have done that in the top nav bar, side nav bar, wherever you put your navigation, that's super helpful as well. And it's really just an add-on that can let people see a little bit more about you or have access to physical copies of things like your resume. I personally don't think it's necessary, but if you wanna add it, go right ahead. Okay, so in conclusion, the entire site should convey who you are, what you do, and how you do it well, why you should get a job, why you should get that interview. You really need to put yourself into the mind of the hiring manager, HR person, founder of the startup, who's gonna be looking at your personal portfolio website and making a decision whether they wanna bring you in for a conversation and an interview. You really don't wanna complicate it more than that. You wanna keep it as simple as possible and laser focused on getting that interview. Show the projects that you're great at. Talk about the skills that you really wanna specialize in and make sure the design is not overly cumbersome and overly confusing. If you follow these tips, I am certain that your portfolio will jump to the next level and you'll be even more prepared for that interview or for those freelancing gigs. And I'm super excited to hear about your success. Let me know in the comments if this has been helpful or if there's any other questions that you might have. And if you found value in this video, I'm so glad that you did and we'll see you in the next one.